Well, my name is Alexander Stutterheim and I'm the founder and creative director at Stutterheim Raincoats, uh, which initially was a antidepressant uh, hobby project a couple of years ago, but now it's a well, we are trying to become an international fashion brand, brand within rain. Are you less depressed? Than uh, before? Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think, actually. Yeah, I need a creative uh, project to get out of my... Not depression, we, have, we play around with the melancholy theme and the melancholy mood. And that's not as... Um, uh, you know, depression is an illness. That's really severe. But melancholy, every Sweden, most other people also, I guess, uh, knows about this state of mind that you can feel, feel blue from time to time. But we work with like trying to embrace that feeling instead, which often occurs uh, when it's raining. So that's the com that's the connection between those two. How did you come up with the business idea? Well, to start up, I didn't uh, think upon it as a business idea. Nowadays, it's a business and a brand, but uh, initially it was more. A project that I wanted to 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 do on my spare time because I was a bit tired of uh, compromising with my ideas uh, when I worked as a copywriter, which I've done for 15 years at that time. So I needed something completely uh, um, a project completely that could be run completely by my own ideas and aesthetics and so on. When did you start your business? I started a business 2011. Uh, or actually I came up with the idea then uh, and then I had it as a hobby, hobby for one year or so so I continued working as a copywriter and I decided to to update my granddad's raincoat in the very best way I could and, and it could take some time I'm, I'm a bit tired of all this hectic uh, times we live in and the mass production and the throwaway mentalities. I wanted to do something slow because I have been running for the, my full life and changing car careers, changing workplaces, new apartments and so I wanted something or my shrink wanted me to actually to have a, a slow scale project. Do you have a calmer life now once you're a businessman? No, but uh, much more fun because I'm the head of it now and I, I can do uh, the stuff that I want and as you notice there are like seven people now employed so uh, they take care of all the boring stuff which could make a person really depressed with all the numbers and finances which I'm, I don't have any skills about that. So uh, yeah, I'm a bit calmer now actually, yeah I could say, but it's from time to time when we launch new uh, items or add items to our to my collection, uh, then it's very stressful and we go to trade shows and, and uh, well, but most of the time now it's better than before because I'm, I'm, I'm in the, not in the passenger seat anymore, I, I, I actually run this business and brand. You do. So why raincoats? <clears throat> it could have been a novel, it could have been a painting if I were good on, in writing or, or, or painting. It, it was just that I wanted to express myself in some way and I had felt that for a couple of years until I actually um, was on my way to a meeting and it was a downpour outside and my umbrella was broke and I just had this Gore-Tex this white Gore-Tex jacket which make me look like a golfer lost in town or like I was off to climb a mountain or something. And I, 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 I was a bit early to the meeting so I stopped by and uh, had a coffee and I just studied how other people were dressed in the rain but and, and realized most, most of them was, wasn't properly dressed I thought. They had a broken umbrella or a newspaper over the head and they scattered from one door post to another to hide themselves from the rain. And I thought that was kind of a shame. Of course there are trench coats like Burberry trench coats and so on but and and then uh, I didn't think about that much more. I just found, found it a bit strange and odd that people didn't protect themselves in a more fashionable way. 
And then uh, just a couple of weeks later, totally accidentally, I, I found my granddad's old fisherman's coat in a barn outside Stockholm, in, a, in the Stockholm archipelago. He had recently passed away, so we went through his stuff and, and on a wall, on a, on a nail, it was hanging. His old fisherman's coat from the 60s, I guess. And I tried it on. He was a bit smaller than me, so it was really tight. And but it, I, it had a very great look, and, and uh, it was like vintage, and it was a rubberized um, surface. And I decided to buy one when I got back to Stockholm, uh, but I couldn't find them. They were like the Gore-Tex market for fabric had taken over the, this industry, because in the 60s and 70s most people had these these raincoats or fisherman's coats in, the, in, in when they were out in their summer houses or, or even in town. So the idea was to them to make an homage for my granddad to, to update it and make a more city-like version of it. But it's a small segment in the fashion world. Is it profitable to make rain jackets? Uh, it, ha it haven't been that for three years, but now it is. <laughs> it's starting to be that, at least. I didn't know anything about this industry, because when I was a cop copywriter I could write a copy and then I could send an invoice and then, then, it's, then I got the money and then that's it. But when you produce actual products you need to buy the material, you need to produce them, you need to pay salaries to receive services. And then uh, hopefully you can sell them to to retailers, and then eventually, hopefully, they will pay you. So there's a cash flow issue. I didn't know anything about this before, and I'm just starting to understand it. But I have a CEO now who understands the business side of it. Uh, but it's it um, we have we are selling really well, and and uh, but, but it takes time for building to build a brand, invest in a lot of stuff, and. And uh, well, we make actually a small profit now, but as we do that, we immediately hire people. Mm. So people think I'm a millionaire now, but uh, I'm not. But I have at least a salary now. I didn't have that for the first two years. So it takes much longer time to see a result in this business, you mean? Yeah, and then um, it does. But we had extremely luck. We have very high-end retailers. We have a lot of... Uh, press and uh, so we have been lucky in that way so it must be very very hard for other brands that are new that doesn't get this kind of attention as I have so it's a really tough business how come you do get all of attention you must be very good at marketing I think uh, I think we are a bit odd in several ways. We just make one thing and we do it the best we can. Other brands they make a to you know sneakers and suits and everything but we just make raincoats or actually now we are doing umbrellas as well but we stick to one thing and, and um, uh, so people can't like uh, when we are doing one thing properly and not trying to do everything. And um, they also like this, uh, was I, that I mentioned earlier, the melancholy thing that we are not all about buy our stuff and become happy, but we try to explore this melancholy um, mood that often appears when it's raining and try to, to embrace that feeling and try to play with it and in different ways. And, and uh, well, People like that, the, the darker sides, <laughs> even though we do it with a lot of humor as well, I hope. Uh, so it's a, you can say it's a very niche brand. And we have a, this story, of course, that people think that I made up because I was a copywriter, but it's actually true. With my granddad's coat and uh, Swedish heritage, and we are doing them by hand, and they're like slow scale, and it's extremely important. And that's not words. <laughs> I, I mean it because I'm, I'm f really tired of this throwaway society we live in. 
So I want to like be an antidote for that if I can to, to and to make wrinkles that could last for 25 years or something. Uh, Is it profitable? To be to be focusing on quality. Yeah, I, I hope we have to see that. I think it will be because it, it rains a lot all over the world. So if we can uh, build a brand and we can uh, go out on new markets and meet the needs of, of, of both women and men on, on different markets, we I think we'd, uh, we have a mar market, yeah. Who is your customer? Well, uh, we have every type of customers actually. We have these super hipster guys in New York, like Jay-Z, Kanye West, and like these celebrities buying the coat. But I'm equally happy when there's an old couple from Norrköping, for example, buying the coat for going berry picking in the forest. Or we can have this young hipster Södermalm type, or we can have a posh lady from Östermalm, the more posh area of Stockholm. And, uh, well, it's basically everyone. It's a unisex coat and it's mo most of the people trying it think it's a good fit. I worked extremely hard with the, the, the cut and the design of the coat. Even with being a smaller brand, you are already made it into Barney's in New York and you have celebrities such as JC wearing your clothing. Can you explain your marketing and sales strategy? Yes, uh, that's very easy because we don't have any. <laughs> we just have our products and we have our story, the Swedish melancholy at its driest, and we have the story about my granddad and, and making them slow scale and handmade. And then one thing lead to another and suddenly Barnis went into a store. In, I have an own ring store in Stockholm. And uh, the buying team from Barnes were here visiting Acne, and they accidentally passed my my store, and they like. They were they said they were blown away by the coats and the brand, and they were very, very fond of me doing one thing, honestly and personally, and so, so they they like, we will we will order coats from you to try and that was one year ago now. Do you think that's the trend to focus on one thing? Uh, do I think? Uh, I'd, uh, I can't answer that actually. I don't know. I think it's a trend that you do them as local as you can and, it's, and in an honest way and with no, with, with no fuss and no uh, shortcuts in the material and um, way to produce them. I think people want to buy decent stuff uh, made uh, in good conditions and they want to have items that they can last for, they, they can have for a long time. Could you give three advices to people trying to start their own clothing line? Yeah, uh, you have to believe uh, in yourself. You have to have a very passion driven uh, idea uh, envision what you want to accomplish. You need to have enormous amount of patience and be persistent. You need to have this story I think actually because it's not you can't just make one product. You need to have a more deep communication with your from with your brand to, to the clients I think. You need a good uh, accountant to keep track of uh, finances, which I didn't have the first two years. And you need to have a good shrink <laughs> that can handle all your uh, neurosis. Uh, mainly for me, it had been a financial neurosis. I had to sell my apartment. I was. Uh, it's very stressful to, to know that you don't make any money out of it because it takes time. But eventually if you stick to your concept and develop it and have good people working with you, you, you might succeed. But it's a, it's a war. Uh, when we're going to trade shows, there are like thousands of brands and everybody wants to get into Barneys. So, uh, so it's not easy. It's not just, you can't wake up one day and say, oh, hey, I will cut a ring out out of this material and then it's, no, it, it's a long, long 
and tough journey. And fun, of course. It's a way of living. For me it seems so amazing to have an idea and then going from an idea to actually make a brand and build a company. Yeah. How has it been? That it has been very surreal because I still look upon it in one way as uh, my idea and my project and suddenly there are like budgets. I didn't make a budget for like two and a half years so that could be another tip to actually make a budget. Uh, uh, but going from this idea from the basement and to to like this we are oh, we are having like 300 retailers at the moment now. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm actually understands it really in a couple of years perhaps I can look upon it and see well I, I actually did it because previously in my life I have had ideas and I didn't have the time or the energy or the the guts to, to, to persuade them, uh, do you say persuade? To, to proceed with them. And, um, uh, but for this one, I really decided that I should go from A to Z without getting tired. And that I can see that I have actually succeeded with. So that's, um, that's me and my shrink are very proud of that. <laughs> that I didn't get bored <laughs> during the, during the, Process. I have two more questions. Yep. The one is, do you think it's good for people that are running their own company to have an extra income during the startup process? Yeah. Or else... Maybe you, you can uh, phrase it in your own words. Okay. Because... I think it's good uh, that you have a, a, a day job or uh, in the startup phase or if you have an really good idea you could try to pitch it to an investor or to the bank uh, and the investor of course have their share of the company then and you can't be as influent uh, you have to listen to them and like do reports and that's kind of stressful i could imagine and or you can go and and sell your apartment or whatever take loans at the bank and go for it but if you are a bit um, less bold, you probably should stick to a day job for a year or two. Depending on if you, if you invent something amazing, people will pick it up and help you. But My last question is, I hear from your colleagues, or I hear from your employees, that you're really good at social media and also <laughs> seeing your Twitter. You yeah. write a lot. How do you market your company? We don't do any advertising. We don't have any budget for for marketing. And when I started this uh, again hobby project, I wrote about it on my private Facebook account. Like now I'm now I'm doing a, trying to do a raincoat, and people thought, "Oh, you're you're a crazy guy." And they followed this project, and then I, I like, like switched the account to a more professional after a while. But I, I kept writing uh, very personal things, and probably a PR agency would say I'm totally nuts and I need a strategy for social media. But I, I, I don't have that, and I'm a bit boundless, <laughs> so I like I write whatever or post whatever I come to mind. So I don't have any strategy so i don't know if i'm good at it but it, it it's a way of me express uh, express expressing the the brand and what i'm doing so i don't sometimes i is a bit too trigger happy and like publish um, prototype of uh, items that even the board or the, my colleagues know about so they're like oh shall we do that a piece of rain cape now so sometimes i need to hold back but i am not good at that, but I need to be a bit better on that. So I'm, I'm just writing straight out from my heart uh, personal things or um, brand related stuff or I don't think much about it. It's just a channel for me to express myself.